Hello, welcome back to the Little Craft House. Uh, today I thought I'd bring you along with me whilst I make this beautiful pair of floral earrings. So made from polymer clay, really super simple to make. Um, yeah, we'll go through it step by step so you can see how I did it and then you can make them too. So first up, I am using um, Sculpey Souffle poppy seed that's the black one and I'm also using some of these colors here which were my custom mixed colors that we did last week in last week's tutorial so if you missed that tutorial skip back and have a look at that um, we're also using this beautiful color here this one is indigo metallic which is a primo polymer clay so I'm just going to cut myself a bit of this one and get it conditioned up. Um, the other ones I've already conditioned and I have rolled through to a about a three millimeter thickness, um, just the thickest setting on my pasta machine. Um, look how beautiful this one is with the metallic shimmer through it. That is why I absolutely love this one. Uh, so yes, I'm just going to get it conditioned down, which for some reason this block is a little bit um, firmer than normal. Um, I don't, th I think this is the second block of this I've had and the first one wasn't like it but this one is it seems really quite crumbly um, so I've just I took a bit of time just to hand condition with the roller uh, but I thought I would just show you guys about conditioning it so if you do get some polymer clay that's super crumbly like this one um, I like to put a little bit of body warmth into it so I'm trying to use my warm hands to warm it up my hands are never very warm though that's the problem um sometimes what i'll do is wrap the piece back up in a bit of plastic and i'll sit on it for a while um that just puts a bit of yeah a bit of warmth into it um in summer which today is a pretty warm day but usually in summer clays are easier to work with because the warmth of the clay uh the warmth of the weather softens the clay um but yeah this one's just being super difficult and it's just crumbling everywhere. So I'm just using the roller to just kind of squish it. I'm trying to bind those bits of clay together um, and then, yeah, just putting it through the pasta machine. But if you have crumbly clay, just be really careful putting it through the machine because it just crumbles and then it gets all caught up in your roller um, and then you've got to clean it, which isn't fun. So I'm gonna go again because it seems to be a little bit softer. I've taken it down kind of thin folded it in half and just slowly through. Um, every time you fold it in half, see how it's kind of, I'm not sure if you can see, it kind of cracked on the side there when I folded it in half, which made it into two pieces. That means it's not conditioned enough. So that's kind of obvious with this one, but the telltale sign that your clay is conditioned enough is that when you fold it over, it will just fold nicely and you'll just get a bend on the side rather than it just cracking into two halves. So that's how I sort of tell if my clay is conditioned enough. Um, I'm just going to do the fold in the edges bits here because it's getting all ratty tatty on the sides. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a stretch, a bit of a pull. Um, still trying to put that bit of like pressure on it with my fingers um, and then just back through the machine again. And I'm just going to keep doing this until it softens up. Um, if you've got Sculpey clay conditioner, um, that Oh, sorry, Sculpey Clay Softener. That helps to um, soften it up. The Fimo and Cernet both do a brand of clay softener as well. Um, I don't have any on hand, so I'm just going to keep going like this. So I'm just going to keep putting it through. Um, eventually, I'll start moving my rollers down to getting thinner and thinner as well, and that also helps to break down those components of the clay, squish it all together, and get it conditioned. So yeah, I'm just going to keep working on this for a while until it is conditioned and then we can get back to making our earrings. Right, so after lots of mixing, it has now got to the stage where I can fold it in half and it does the nice bend rather than cracking into two pieces. So this one is ready to use and now we can get back to making our earrings. So the other packet colours we're using is Primo Fuchsia, Souffle Racing Green and Primo Zinc Yellow. Now this is where I got my inspiration from. It's an earring card that I had made up and it's got these cute little flowers in the corner. So I really liked this little pattern here and so I thought I'd just try and replicate it and make it into a pair of earrings. So the tools I'm going to use today, I've got my little arch cutter here. I thought it was important to choose the main shape so I know 
proportions what I'm going to be working with. Um, I've got a flower cutter and I've got the circle cutter. So the circle cutter has both ends that I like to use. Um, I've also got this ball tipped tool here. So you can see on the end there's a little balls. One end's a little bit thicker than the other. Um, I've also got my knives here. So my flexi blade and my scalpel blade. Um, both of those always come in handy to have. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'll be using any other um, tools. Oh, I'm also using my acrylic roller, which we um, you saw me using before. And I do use my pasta machine occasionally just for reconditioning and smoothing out. I'm also going to be using my slab square here, which is something that we sell in our store. And that mean, that helps to keep the consistent thickness levels um, or the thickness levels consistent on my slab as I'm rolling things down so that it doesn't um, distort it like it would if I was putting it through the pasta machine. Um, right, so first steps is just to cut out a bunch of flowers um, using that circle cutter. So I did actually roll these clays down a little bit thinner than how they were before. So this is probably about the halfway mark on my pasta machine. Um, main reason being that when I do hand roll them down, I don't want them to stretch out too much. So I just kind of want them to just push into the clay. I don't want them to yeah, build, I don't want them risen up and I don't want them to stretch out. So by going thinner, it's going to hold that shape much nicer. So I'm not really sure how many of these I'm going to need. So I'm just going to cut out a bunch to start with. Um, I can always scrunch it back up and add it back to the clay afterwards. Uh, and then I'm just going to start randomly placing them onto the clay to find out what positions I like. So this is what I was just talking about. I'm going to use the roller to really gently roll over the top and just push that flower into the base clay without stretching it and distorting it. Now I'm going to do each one one at a time because I want them to be layered um, and I don't want it to get too thick. I think it'll look funny if I pile them all on together and then roll it out. I think that will kind of change the shapes. So yeah, just like that. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. I think I probably should have added the inner circles first though, before I rolled it down flat. So now I need to kind of do that and make them look, I need to make them look part of it without it um, looking funny. So um, let's just roll a little bit here in my finger and pop it on. Roll that one down. And then I need the other two to have circles too, but I don't want the circle to obviously overlap the flower that's on top. So I'm just going to use the little cutter to kind of cut away some bits and just try and fit it in. Yeah just like that and that actually worked really well <laughs> worked better than I thought that was going to and I don't really want these inner circles to be a perfect circle shape that's why I'm not cutting them out with the cutter um, I just want them to kind of yeah just be a just be a little yellow blob in the middle ah look at that like I'd never made a mistake let's smooth that down too If you find that when you're rolling, it is stretching them in one particular way, you can always just obviously change the direction of your roller just to evenly go in each direction. And so with this slab, I do want there to be some gaps. I don't want it to be too full. Although being really full of just those flowers would also look really cool. But I'll save that idea for another day. Um, I'm just going to... Yeah, there we go. I've put the yellow center in first this time and then I'm squishing down the flower. And it doesn't matter if the roller goes over that other one because I've already flattened them, so that's fine. And I'm just going to alternate what colors of each flower are in what positioning. So the other one had the orange first, then the pink, then the purple. Now I've gone pink, purple, and then orange. So that, yeah, it's just going to change, change their positioning. And 
and I'm just going to keep working away on this. So I might pop it in to time lapse mode um, just so that you can still see me working on it, but it's not going to be too boring. Okay, so now that I've got those main components on, I am going to use that slab square and just give a full roll over the top to make sure that this is now nice and flat and even and no little bits are poking up. Um, so that's where that slab square comes in nice and handy. If you don't have one, you can use something else that you would use um, to keep even thickness. So you can use pop sticks or rulers or something else that you've got laying around that is the thickness of what you want your earrings to be. And so now we're going to work on the 3D element of the slab. So I thought um, this would just kind of add a little bit of interest, having the flowers being flat and having the little vines being more of a 3D effect. Um, I'm going to work on some little leaves first. So I'm just going to roll them on my hand just into sort of like a little overly shape and then just put them randomly on the base and of course we're going to do them as pairs so let's go again and I'm not measuring these at all I just this this slab isn't symmetrical and perfect so it doesn't matter if they're different sizes I mean obviously if you wanted them to be the same you could do that um, I'm just rolling them down a little bit They probably don't really need to be too flat because I don't mind if they're a little bit risen. I decided that this corner was looking a little bare so I'm just going to add another couple of little flowers to it. I want to be able to get a couple of pairs of earrings out of it so the more I've got on it then the more flowers that will be on the earrings but still keeping those gaps because I do want those gaps to still be there okay so once I'm happy with how those flowers are I've just gone back to doing the leaves um, yeah just because you've finished one element um, if you've got the ability to go back and add more and you want to don't feel like you can't so I'm going to add a few of these leaves now um, we're going to add some vines and some berries but at any point I can go along and add more again if I want to sometimes I feel like just because I've finished a part I can't add more of that but of course you can doesn't we don't have any limits when we're creating we can do whatever we like okay so now I'm on to doing some vines so again I've just used my hands I'm just making it's a little bit wibbly wobbly it's not perfect but that's completely fine because in nature vines aren't perfect either so we're just going to add some yeah just some little squiggles um, just randomly coming out from these leaves and from behind the flowers I'm um, just going to make sure I do them in sort of different directions different lengths um, because we don't want it to look like it's symmetrical or trying to be symmetrical um, yep just popping them randomly on here filling gaps and then I'm just adding a few more little leaves and I'm actually just doing this in a different green that I had sitting on my table too. So I think this green was just a scrap mix. I don't think it had a recipe. Um, oh gosh. that's st Okay, I am not sure what just happened there. Um, I think I filmed that whole bit in time lapse. So um, I can't slow it down. Otherwise it's going to look really weird. But right at the end, I put down a piece of... Um, baking paper and then I just did a roll over the top just to smooth everything down so I said before it was a 3d element it's not really 3d because I did squish it down um, I probably won't squish these balls down though of the berries um, I think I leave them yeah we're just going to use the texture tool to um, 
push them down so we're not going to actually like flatten the berries but the vines and the leaves all did get a little bit of a flatten at the end there when it just went by super fast um so berries i have just rolled out a long piece of that fuchsia polymer clay and i'm just rolling each little one into tiny little balls and i'm just going to use my knife to pick them up and then we're going to place them down on those vines so just along the vine i really like this fuchsia color it's making it pop so it's just giving it that nice little bit of brightness that otherwise was kind of lacking in how it was and i think that's why i chose that other green to add as well just to give an extra little bit of brightness um, on that dark background so again this little procedure here takes quite a while um, it's quite time consuming and making sure the balls are they're around equal because i'm quite bad with um cutting up my little snake of clay and some end up being quite huge so then i have to cut them down so again i don't want them identical and i don't want them um, completely symmetrical but i do need them all around the same size just so that it doesn't look odd having some really big ones but anyway i'm going to work on this for a while and then we'll go on with our next step So it's starting to look really good. Loving those berries on there. Loving the way the flowers are smooshed in but not um, distorted. Um, I know I say the word distorted a lot. I don't want things to be distorted. Right, so I'm going to get my ball tip tool and I'm going to just press down on each of these little berries and that's going to give them still, still that little bit of 3D look but it's going to push them down. It's going to secure them into their spot because at the moment they're just kind of placed there and it's going to give them a little dent on the top as well just, just as a bit of um, texture to them. Next up, I'm just grabbing my little scalpel knife and we are just going to use the back of it. So the back's still kind of sharp, but we're just going to use the back of it to put a little, just a little um, dent or a little line in the middle of each of the leaves, just to divide them up a little bit to make them a little bit more leafy. Um, if you've got another tool that's got sort of like a flat edge on it, that'll work too, but my knife was just sitting there so that's why I'm just going to use this one so just going to go around each of the pieces now I haven't done it today but top tip for you if you're using um, if you're doing texture like this and you need to go kind of in different angles you can always lift your slab up off of the tile and put it on a bit of baking paper and that way you're able to just move your baking paper around and so that that way you're always your hands always in the same position but you can move that slab around without having to kind of work awkwardly like I am here hope that makes sense I'll do it in one of my other videos I don't know why I didn't do it on this one because this is a little bit awkward working in different angles but anyway um yeah I'll do it another time to show you what I mean And the next bit of texture that we're going to do is with that ball tip tool again but this time I'm going to use the smaller end so that's just got the little tiny ball on the end of that and we're just going to fill in this yellow inner circles and we're just going to put some little dots on there now for this slab I haven't done any texture to the flowers I've just left the flowers as they are so that is totally up to you that if you're remaking this slab for yourself if you do want to add texture to the flowers you can definitely do that and I'd be doing that at this stage as well so you could always add some little lines or dots um, you could also wait until after it's baked and then add some Posca paint marker you could yeah add lots of different things um, but I'm just going to leave them plain today I'll leave it up to your imagination if you'd like to add something onto those flowers yourself 
And now we have finished the slab component of the earrings. So I absolutely love the way that this has turned out, except that little tiny dirty dot there on that pink flower, but that's fine. We will work around that. I love the way the slab looks and it's always such a bittersweet thing to cut the pieces out because I would love to just bake it as is and just keep it because it looks really nice. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut my arches out. So I'm going to position them. I want to get at least two pairs out of this slab today, um, along with some possible studs, maybe stud toppers for the top. So in my positioning, I mentioned earlier about how I wanted some of the blank space in there. So I want the blank space, I want some flowers, I want some berries, I want some vine. So I'm just going to kind of work out the best positionings for my cutters. There may be a little bit of wastage. I'll try and fill the waste with um, studs so that there's not as much wastage. And one thing that I am trying to remember as well whilst positioning my cutter is to make sure that the berries aren't in that very top part of the cutter, um, in the very top part of the arch where I'll be drilling a hole. Um, only because it becomes a little bit awkward. They might chip away a little bit um, if just because they aren't super flat. So I'm just going to make sure that they're kind of to the side a little bit like this one here. Um, and it just will make the drilling part when I put holes in a little bit easier. So I'm just using my little red circle cutter here. Um, I know the red side's plastic and it's not as sharp of a cut as the metal side, but I do like that sizing better. So I'm just gonna cut the four, pay, four little circles out for toppers at the moment, and I'm just gonna move the skeleton to the side. I'll cut some more studs out of that afterwards, and I might have a little play around with the scraps to see what I can create. But for now, I'm just going to remove them off the tile with my flexi blade, give them a little smooth around and get them ready to go into the oven. Right, so popping them in the oven. Um, I like to bake at one between 120 and 130 degrees. It's hard to tell on my dial. And I do it for an hour. And then that is usually sufficient for my pieces. Um, if you want to learn all about my oven, you can scroll back to my frequently asked questions tutorial and I talk all about the oven there. Right, so out they have come. I've let them cool off a little bit just so I don't burn my fingies. And I'm going to just now put them on my tile and then we can organise how I want them to be assembled. I'm also just going to give them a quick little neaten up. I can use either my Dremel drill, which has a really soft little buffing pad like this on it, um, run it around the edge. Otherwise, I've also got some fine grit sandpaper like this one here, and I just go around the edge just to smooth it off. And then once I've sanded them, I have also now drilled them as well. So they've got the holes in them and they are ready to assemble. So I've got myself some little black jump rings here. I thought black would be a good color. Um, these ones are eight millimeter black jump rings. Um, eight millimeters generally my preferred size. Um, sometimes if my holes are down a little bit low or my pieces are particularly thick, I might go with a 10 mil, but generally the eight mil is good. And I've got my two sets of pliers to help open and close the jump rings. And so I am doing things a little bit backwards. Um, I do that when I do tutorials because I like to be able to show the finished pieces. Um, after I have taken my photographs and things of these, I will add some um, earring backs to them. So I'll glue those on and finish them up properly afterwards. So that brings me to the end of the tutorial today. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me and making this pair of earrings or two pairs of earrings actually. So yeah, thanks again for joining me. Um, I shall be back again next week with another tutorial. So see you then. Bye.